Uh, it's been a bit of an up-down tournament so far for you guys. Kyle specifically talked to me about the choice for the Fu Manchu today uh, to get the team back together as opposed to something like a, like a handlebar mustache. We were kind of talking last night. We were talking strats, kind of figuring out what we had to do. And yeah. it was really honestly just apparent to me. I uh, had to go downstairs, get the shaving cream, get the one-ply razor, and go to town, man. I got to support the team somehow, so I figured this is the best way to do it morally, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the one-ply razor. <laughs> Bro, I'm not even playing. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a thing of beauty. Now, this is, maybe there's a one-ply razor kind of strategy when it comes to what you guys do today. Just generally, I mean, again, it, it seems like we continue to come back to this, but what do you do differently today than you have the last two to try to get yourselves back on the same G2 mojo that we're used to? Uh, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. We have no idea what we're doing. We've changed up so much stuff the past day uh, with practice. We were trying out different comps and different things that we thought might uh, that we might be able to pull into this tournament that hasn't been seen yet. Um, so we don't even know what we're doing. So there's no way they'll know what we're doing. That can be uh, that can definitely be a strength for you guys. And, and talk to me about these best of threes that we're having to keep playing. Does that help you guys or hurt you guys as a very momentum based team to have to go so quick? Um, I mean, if we can get the first win, we know we can get the second win. Uh, second win. So, I, I mean, we just have to come out here. It's it's do or die now. We're already in a loser's bracket, so we can give 100%. We don't have to worry about being tired. We're not playing another set today, so it's it, it's do or die right now. And the do or die is interesting because, again, back when you go to the regular season, it's a perfect, flawless season for you guys. And then all of a sudden, you know, the wheels fall off the car a little bit over the last couple of days. Where do you, I mean, is there anything that you just say, you know what, let's just do whatever? I mean, do we see another thing that's like, I mean, Sky, let's just do it. Does someone make a call in comms and say, I just want to do this and we're just going to go with it? Or are you trying to keep things a little bit more focused back to what you remember from week one to five? Or where, where is your headspace at as far as how you approach game after game, step by step? Uh, well, the Sky thing specifically, that wasn't like just, oh, let's pick Sky because we're winning. It was it was calculated. Um, I, I know for a fact that we can we can outdraft Kanga. We've played with Kanga, um, and and we're finally getting the match that everybody has been talking about for two years. Who's who is better, NA or is it Kanga? And I was like, well, they've always had Eager, so they're finally getting us. It's we're not in our best shape, but um, I I think it's more about Fnatic and Space Station playing extremely well than us playing extremely poorly. So I think we'll be able to bring it today. And Kyle, I want to know from your perspective. Where does that call come from to, to sort of throw the old plans out the window and just sort of completely start from scratch? Does that come from the boys or does that come from you? I think after a while uh, of, of doing something one, uh, over and over, repeating, uh, at some point do you just say, you know, let's scrap it, throw it. Let's just go back to what we know, go to the basics, start from the ground and build it again, you know what I mean? So we're not really looking to go from where we were, ground up, go. <clears throat> so. Now, last thing for you guys before you go in again, that was actually going to hit on the whole, this is finally the time we're going to see you guys as versus Kanga. Uh, are you almost a little disappointed that you don't get to go up against Hades and Josh Ken? Because that was where a lot of that rivalry was fueled. Yeah, that, that's where most of the animosity was at. <laughs> and uh, no, I, I, I love hanging out with Diggy Dog. Uh, I go into his stream, he comes into mine, we, we fool around a little bit. And uh, I think the, the friendly rivalry is still there. There's no more animosity. So this should this should be really good. Good. Well, good luck to you guys. Hopefully you, you can at least stay friends afterwards. We'll see how that hands out. And maybe we'll see after game with a little post-game victory if we're feeling saucy enough to get the dub. Hopefully. And what a matchup it's going to be. I think reputation, mustache, clout, it's all on the line here for uh, for Kenga Esports and G2. I feel like if, they, if G2 ends up losing this set, the mustache is bad luck at this point. Yeah? Right? If it comes through, because it's just not... Going exactly the, the way they want the entire Kent. time they've had it. And, and I mean, this this <laughs> this matchup goes back a little ways, like Cus Cutie was saying, all the way back to uh, DreamHack Valencia last summer. Basically, there were uh, there was you know some grumbling, some unhappiness with the way that the bracket was seeded at that tournament. Kanga received the third seed, and uh, Cus Cutie and the gang here of G2 Esports received the fourth seed. They obviously thought they should be seated higher. Yada yada yada. G2 goes on to win that tournament there kind of proving themselves, but now there is no Josh Kent on this roster. There is no mustache rivalry between them. You've got Hade saying this roster that Kenga's bring to the table now is stronger than they've ever been, whereas you've got 
G2's cuss saying, you know, we're not as strong as we've ever been. So just how are you feeling about after hearing both those perspectives? I mean, coming into it, it feels kind of like G2 are riding this line where they're confident in themselves, but at the same time, they just haven't been able to perform up I don't to their feel own that standard. Way. I don't feel that confidence coming Well, it kind of feels like, well, I don't know if cuss is either retconning or whatever, but it's just like the way things have been going... Yes, the other teams have been playing well, but they haven't looked like G2 against them. And I think that's been my problem yeah. is just, yes, Fnatic, yes, SSG, they're playing lights out, but that was not Which the I G2 get. that they should have been playing against. I get it, man. They, they're a scary team when uh, when they get the chance to be, but, I mean, it's SSGs look better than ever, not a oh, sincere yeah. defending world championships. It's, it's pretty much just that simple. I think this guy right here is going to be incredibly important for their performance for the outcome today. When he pops off, things are so much easier for G2. Uh, for me, a big question mark in Season 1, I think he's played better than ever. I think oh, yeah. he's a completely new player in Season 2. I've never been as impressed with eye drop bodies as I have been in these past couple of months. And there have been a few key games where in that moment it is drop bodies. Who's the one who picks things up? Who's the one who kind of shoulders everybody and brings them right back into the game? And I think that's going to be big for them. Whereas these guys, I mean, at least they have a win today, so they're kind of still riding that high. They definitely do, and I think that's going to be big for Kanga. They seem to have figured out what's working well for them, and that's kind of what I hypothesize is that 3 DPS was going to be important to their victory here today. Let's take a listen to what Kanga thought is going to be a win condition for them. Hey guys, before we get into the matchup ahead of you, Nudie, I, I just want to ask you to take us through the comms and what was being said and how you guys were feeling after that really crushing defeat in the first game on Bright Marsh. I think uh, we had a bit of a slow start, uh, kind of same as yesterday against um, uh, Navi. We had a relatively slow start in the first map. Uh, the comms, well, it was a little more quiet than usual, um, definitely, but we definitely tried to keep it positive. Um, we were basically hyping each other up, uh, and we knew we could, we could definitely win, um, even if uh, heading into the next map. Um, yeah, so well played by Chroma there. Now, I kind of want to talk more about just your guys' preparation coming in versus how much adjusting you've possibly had to do so far in this tournament. This can go really for both of you guys, but when you guys came in, and Hades, we were talking, you were saying that this new roster of Kanga, if they were to play up against the old roster of Kanga, would probably win more often than not. Now, is that preparation that you guys had coming in kind of faltering a little bit? Or are you finding yourself having to adjust a lot or just a little? Um, well, previously there's been bigger sets of matches and we've had more practice. So this time um, we're really seeing improvements as the tournament goes on. So the further it goes, the better we'll get. The best of five, best of sevens will be even easier for us. So yeah, there's a lot of adjusting being done at the moment and it will just, we'll just continue to adjust and get better as it goes along. G2's a, a hell of a team and uh, a very versatile team at that. What do you guys think they're going to come out with today with their backs against the wall? Being such a, a scary, versatile team with nothing to lose, what are you preparing for? Um, really, they're just... They can play a lot of stuff, but they're not... They don't really have a set meta compared to a lot of the other teams we researched. So that either means that they don't really... They're not sure what they want to run or that they're trying to adapt to maybe beat the EU teams who beat them in previous lands, and it's just not working out for them. So hopefully we can take advantage of that. I was like more Danuti here, because now you're going to be going up against Cus Cutie in kind of the support versus support battle. How, how's, how's your mindset going up against a guy who is so formidable in the Paladins community? Well, hope, uh, lucky for me, I'm a support player, so hopefully I won't be up against the support player as a face-to-face -face combat. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, we're, we're feeling pretty good heading into this one. Uh, we've warmed up. <laughs> uh, as a support player in these matchups, uh, all we see is a lot of healing, but a lot of communication, I think, comes from the supports. Um, as being so new to the team, do you bring a lot of that communication to the team? What, what a, outside of the healing and you know some utility ultimates do you bring to this roster? Oh, definitely, I add, I add a lot of comms. Um, usually, as a support player, you're at the back, you can see everything. Um, you can call for retreats. And less, less so pushes, more the tank players do that, but uh, definitely retreats and um, um, basically calling for the team to heal up or something like that. I actually kind of want to continue on that 
kind of same train because obviously you're sitting next to the guy who previously was one of the big IGLs for Kanga. So how much mentorship has gone specifically into Nudie and how much have you learned on the flip hand from Hades with his previous experience with the team? Oh, I definitely learned a lot as, a, as he's now um, being coached and he's doing a lot of VOD reviews and uh, helping out with drafts as well. So we've improved a lot since uh, when I just joined the team, uh, a lot of positioning and comms and stuff like that as well. Hey, who is, who was, and who now would you say is kind of the in-game leader for Kanga Esports? Um, probably the, the oldest roster, it was me, and then Josh started to take over, and just as he took over um, for that last LAN, um, he left, and then I left, so now Diggy's kind of taken that spot. So yeah, it's, we've kind of had like a rotating in-game leader so far. Cool. <laughs> really last thing for me as you guys obviously are moving through this bracket and coming out of the lower bracket seems to be again you know has Chronix, Joel's and of course you got to take a look at Diggy Dog have they really stepped up in your opinion to where the veteranship was previously that you and Josh had together yeah I mean since right after we left there was like an instant drop in comms but then everyone stepped up because there's like a void missing Sometimes people just don't talk because someone else is talking. So now, as soon as we left, they all like stood up to the plate and then the comms actually got better. That's why I think this roster is better overall because previously it might have had me or Josh nearly dictating everything, calling everything. But now that we're both gone and there was left a bunch of like people with the same personalities, now they're all getting involved. So I think that's a way better team dynamic where everyone's calling stuff and doing things rather than just one or two people leading it. Agreed. And uh, looking back at kind of the set in front of you guys, you guys had Pit banned out against you every single game in that Chroma space. And I don't think that's going to be the case with G2. If anything, it might be you guys needing to ban the Pip away from Cus Cutie. How do you think that champion in particular is going to play a, a, a role in this next set, Nudie? Um, Can you solo Pip? Will you be able to bring that ooh, out if you need to? Definitely have done that before. Uh, less so recently. I think it's kind of fallen out of the meta. Uh, whereas uh, previously it has been a solo pip. I've definitely run it a couple of times, but I don't think we'll see a solo pip in, in, in these sets. Hey, do you think there's any other place for pip in this set coming up? Um, we haven't seen a lot of it today, quite frankly. Yeah, like some some teams don't play off healers at all, and the ones who do, it's pretty much only G2 who might pull out the solo pip, so we'll see if they do it and if it works for them. All right, guys, thank you so much, and good luck in your game. Thanks. Thank you. There the boys in black and orange, Kanga Esports, trying to fight their way through the... Hey, I didn't wear my jersey. Well, we're both kind of sporting the Kanga colors here in a way, just a little bit paler for me. I'll go get my jersey once we get in the game, and guys, I don't want to let you down. I don't want to let my team down. I got to be the cheerleader for them here. I'm just interested to see how this goes because, again, it feels like they're they're more confident, I think, than I'm getting the feeling from G2. So when they're coming into this, especially, again, with a win earlier today, they seem to be kind of on that roll of we figured out where we're comfortable, what we need, what our draft should be. That's yeah. where we're going to try to drive things. And G2, getting that, they're in that spot where – they're not winning a lot of lands necessarily. It's been almost a year since their their last land win, but they always come in as undefeated or top seed, right? So they oh, every time that they do lose, no matter who it's against, it's a little bit disappointing because we have such high expectations for them. And we know they're a team that rides on a lot of momentum. They need a strong mental state. We're going to picks and bands now for game number one of this knockout best of three between G2 Esports and Kanga Esports. So far, it kind of feels like a trip back to week one of the PPL, where front lines were the main thing to get rid of. I'd be surprised if, I mean, if Ruckus makes it through, if Anara make it through, then those are going to be very high priority, and that always brings into question, where does Maeve sit, where is Cassie sitting, and how are these teams going to be able to take it? Because Kanga, their Cassie looked unstoppable earlier. Yeah, and uh, that's as a result, I think, of Chronix getting it three games in a row, <laughs> which is something that Kenga didn't do in that best of three. They didn't run three DPS. It was just by happenstance that Chronix got it three times in a row. G2, I think, recognized that pretty early. And they're going to go ahead, ban it away. Kenga Esports. Ruckus still notably up and available on the table. Maeve as well, a big pick for Serpent Beach. A lot of decisions, a lot riding on this last ban. A lot probably going through their head. Terminus has been something that I feel like hasn't been as strong, but it's one of those 
you never notice his impact as deeply as you would notice some other. Pip is going to be the band immediately just trying to smack down Cuss. And I think that's going to be something that, even if G2 hadn't been planning, I mean, they can go to the Grover. It does kind of mess with some of the draft they might want to go to. I mean, Drogo's is something they have loved lately, and that kind of makes it a little bit harder to have him. Hate to say I told him so, but I thought Kanka might be the ones that had to ban out Pip this set. I don't think it's something they're super excited to run either, but it's something they can do. And I think this serves another purpose in that they don't ban Ruckus or Maeve. So they basically guarantee that they are going to get one of those. Maeve being a much bigger pick for oh, yeah. G2 this weekend than I think Ruckus has been. And so far, Ruckus, I feel like he's had his highlight moments, but it's nowhere near what we used to see. He's a lot easier to kill now. Doesn't have anywhere near the same damage reduction that he used to have. Maeve, on the other hand, has that survivability, not only in her mobility, but in that damage reduction like as well. So it's a lot harder to get rid of her. And it also kind of drives you away from you. certain champions. Like Fernando, you're not going to be as heavily picking up when there's a Maeve on the other side. Wow, and they're going to go with the Inar Shaolin here. But we noticed at the end of the Chroma Space that Kanga had seemed to have fully shifted gears into three DPS. Joel's would be the Ruckus player, so if they're not going to be playing double frontline, he's not going to be playing the Ruckus, which means they're just not going to pick it up. That could be exploitable by G2 because they are comfortable running the Ruckus. They are comfortable running the double frontline, and I think Dosips is happy to be sitting inside of the mech. And they're going to be able to get that with a Fernando, so it's a lot of survivability. Immortal ideally not doing what we ended up seeing kind of out of Renegades where it felt maybe like a misclick towards the end of that last game, but either way coming through a lot of damage and a lot of survivability now on the side of G2. And with Maeve being able to create a distraction, I expect her and Ruckus to kind of run through so far. I mean, Inara, she stands on the point. Shaolin might be able to get a fight, but it definitely leans course. more over to G2 right now. They I need on Kanga something to help take care of those. I think Nudie's starting to get a little bit more comfortable on Genos as well. I think Genos is a, a little bit more passive in terms of overall his role in the game. He's going to just be staying alive, hitting his heels, maybe hits a time and space, a couple of good void grips, and you're good to go. You're squared away. Big difference here for Kanga is the Bomb King from Diggy Dog, yeah. whereas he ran the buck in his last set on Serpent Beach. And it's one of those things, I feel like we've seen it online where Diggy Dog's Bomb King can be ridiculous to deal with, but it's not the first thing I think we normally see them jump for. So coming into this, I'm excited to see it. I think this is a map where it could excel, but they're going to have a lot to deal with, specifically just where he's going to fight and how he's going to survive. This was my next topic of conversation. Kinesa, that's what Joel ran last time on this map. However, it was accompanied by the Buck, which I think is a much better tag team in terms of just finishing off those kills yeah. that Kinesa starts if she doesn't kill them outright. Now it's like, what's left for Joel's to pilot? I mean, he likes Victor, but that would be the first Victor of this tournament. And in an elimination best of three, against a very momentum-based team like G2. This first game could very well just decide to set out right. With the way things are going, I mean, G2, they're comfortable running Grover. They still have a tag team, even if it's not a buck. Maeve can clean up Kinesa kills and vice versa. Everything really... I hate to say it, but Tinker and Barrick? The way the lineup they go through. I can't believe... I want someone to clip that and have they're it just so we have that go. written Ooh. down. But they are going to go for the buck, okay. even still. So they're going to have that maybe to try and go in at least to get to Kinesa. So this is something that they did once yesterday when they weren't able to actually put Diggy Dog uh, on the Bomb King. They had to put him on the pip, which was a little bit weird for me. If Diggy Dog and Bomb King, they go hand in hand. They've always gone hand in hand. So now I expect Joel's to actually be playing that Shaolin, the Bomb King for Chronix and Diggy on the buck. Guys, that's the draft for game number one. It's time to get in the game. Well, thanks, guys. And, uh, you know, Vox asked me a great question. Uh, do I think G2 are going to be? Well, the exact phrasing was, uh, what is G2's win condition? And lovely Rain Day here, full of confidence for the North American team, says, is there one? Is there one? That's do how I feel. One? And honestly, right now, I've got to say, I'm feeling in the same boat. This is do or die for G2, right? If G2 don't suddenly stabilize, if they don't find a way, not just to win this, but win this handedly, I don't yeah. think they're back to their previous form. And I don't have a, like any hesitation that the teams which are in the upper bracket, especially right now, can just take them down again. The question is, which you didn't answer, but you told a great story too. Will G2 be G2 owed? <laughs> That's a very good question. Shout and out. And I, I don't know. This was all Vox's idea, whoever he found it from. But at the end of the day, I think it is possible. I think, uh, Kanga, this is the best G2 squad you can take on in this moment. But I think G2 Esports, a lot Five, came up for them. Internally, they had some team issues. Three, They're working through two, it. And sometimes when the one, dust settles, the that clean, fresh start is the best thing you can for a run through a loser's bracket in a tournament 
like this. Everyone getting ready to go. Serpent Beach, first bomb stuck on, and Dosips looking to take the point. Yeah, there's chain reaction as well, so expect this bomb king to be swinging. Wardoom is trying to go aggressive here. Around the side, it's flanking versus flanking right now. Buck taking the uh, advantage Ooh. right now. I mean, he's dead if he has one more rocket. I don't know. Dosips has a rocket in the pocket. Not sure why he doesn't fire that at, at Diggy Dog there. That was a potentially missed opportunity to clean up the Bomb King. But you could tell Dosips playing very patiently. And now Osrino melting like a hot knife through butter. And Evil Eye finding a big kill onto the Stagala War Doom. Oh my Ooh, goodness. And bodies, I drop bodies. Dropping bodies. Aiming at the head. That was a perfect time of the reposition for Kanata as well. Able to transport in just or transport out just as Buck was coming in. Honestly, maybe more coincidental oh. than anything else, but now Idra Bodies is using that to position aggressively here. Finds Joel's, and it's 81% on the objective, Evan. 87% now, and climbing Headhunter still available. Diggy Dog's got to be careful. The Sniper's still around, and they don't even get a chance. Headhunter deletes Chronix. Not even sure if Buck's a playable character anymore in Paladins. You guys might want to check your own systems and see if he's still around, because he is absolutely sent back to base, sent to Spectator. And with 2 minutes and 15 left, climbing up creating this momentum that we have not seen from G2 Esports at all this tournament. There's one G2 as well. I drop bodies now holding the peripheral uh -oh. side. Look at that bob and weave augmented loadout that's being run by this Kanessa, enabling her to transport almost oh, as no. fast as you would be with reposition without even repositioning. But oh, Joel's doesn't find the angle with planted there. Evil Eye picks up that kill. That is a big detriment. Diggy Dog though has his back for the time being and G2 Esports have been in pass right now. And more than one sense with the Inara holding sure. down the front line, but they might be able to find a way to break through this as Headhunter is 56, uh, 57% now charged again already. Question is, if that will make the difference. He used that at the end of the round, didn't really clutch anything, Vox. The crucial moment of that Headhunter was simply more of just icing on the cake rather than the foundation of it as well. Kengi Sports have done a decent job of holding this mid-ground, but they look like they're about to get dropped, and again, Body shows up for a double. Doesn't even need the Headhunter right now, just finding the headshots as Mewtzy goes down as oh, wow. well. Cus Cutie finding the snipe from downtown that time around, and I drop Body is now up on the high ground as Diggadog is actually using the He's wind and out. to try and find their way around corners. Of course, that does lock you in place for two seconds. Diggy Dog is banking on the fact that, that 3P peak advantage is going to give them the edge here as Maeve has activated Midnight and the payload's about to go through. 57 seconds left, but I'm not sure G2 are going to need it at all. Hexafire activated Evil Eye, picks up another big kill for himself. Osrino melting again, and there's a King Bomb, but a through time and space from Nuti will at least help delete Wardoom, but Evil Eye, he's still there. Cuss still blossoming, blooming, and maybe starting something that G2 Esports has yet to begin here which is just a bit of good play. It is, but on the other hand as well, it's really good execution right at the end. The thing that I'm noticing more than actually G2 just being able to push through there is the hesitation that Newsy had to contest. It was this general sitting around right at the end going, do I go in, do I stay here, do I go in, do I, do I stay here? Yeah. That degree of hesitation when playing against a team that has G2's reputation, if not their current caliber, caliber of play, which might be a little bit different, is, is a risky business, but hey, Let's Listen, look at slash lines right now. That's nasty. Zero deaths on three members of G2 Esports. That's not normal. That's not a normal game of Paladins. Anyway, you slice it. Uh, G2 Esports are absolutely playing phenomenally. And maybe Kanga Esports showing the weakness here against a very competitive, very veteran North American team. Cus Cutie, you got to say that he's had some words for his teammates, had some words for himself of encouragement. And uh, now they are starting to pay off here as this Grover is piloting them to victory. Top of the net worth charts by about 200 credits. Buck coming into the back line looking for the nice deletion. Try. Chronix does find Evil Eye. Cus not able to get there quite oh. enough time. Digging off double six eye drop bodies as well. And Wartim could be in a bad spot, but Nudie's being forced back out again. That's a very cautious play, don't you think? I mean, oh yeah. they've got him locked in the corner there, and Chronix is about to join him, but he backs off, knowing how important it is to keep that support alive for the side of Kanga Esports. Chronix is buying time, but look at this, man. I mean, Talk about just really walking a tightrope. Wardoom actually s extends that fight long enough so that Evil Eye can come through and find the buck, and now he's going to get a double kill off of that. Right now, when you're, face or you're facing off against an Inara on the objective, having your Mave alive is so much more important than anything else. The pounce there into the Street Justice enabled pounce, actually only fighting 500 damage, though, based off the fact that this Inara was, ha uh, had their Earthling Guard active, but Dozops is here to help clean up as well. The combined pressure from G2 Esports is just too good. And too good is right. Two daggers as well during midnight. 
is what Maeve is trying to find into the hearts of her enemies. And Kangi Esports certainly seem to be the target today. G2 Esports 96%, 99%. And they're going to capture this again. A Hexafire just to secure it and maybe to keep the momentum rolling as they continue this push, this onslaught, in what feels like a new team today. Yeah, Kangi just weren't able to close the gap and get onto the objective. The only person who's survivable enough to be able to do so is Inara. And well, she moves like a rock through treacle sometimes, yeah. especially when she's being focused down by all of the damage in the world or all of the damage on G2, which to the most part is all of the damage in the world at this point. They've got a pretty frag-heavy team here. And fragging, they are doing indeed, Sir Vox. It's uh, Diggy Dog again getting pressured out, hitting those mid catwalk rockets. Dosip's aiming up, not as easy to do as it looks like, but performing at a very high level, yet to die at all in this game, I think. 14th Street continued on from the first round where they 2 owed, And there it is, the captain of G2 Esports. A lot of talk about Cuss, but Dosip's is the one who does take that role on. I just appreciate seeing Dosip's back on a champion that is able to do damage. Oh, hold that thought. Seismic Crash comes through. Joel's is behind as well. Could find a kill here. And good dash, though. Did you get away from damage? Oh, yeah. Set up a lot, but not much was falling off. You have to stay near the payload. Joseph's again with the emitter. Now he can find Joel's. This could be bad, Vox, as it looks like Osrano now is going to be free to the pressure. I drop bodies with the headshots. Going to delete her off the floor. And now it seems like it just couldn't be any worse for Kanga Esports. Oh, I drop bodies is in the base as well. Chronix picks up a double, though. This is really good. And the trigger discipline that was on the back of that King Bomb was huge for Diggy Dog. Able to help at least bring everybody down low, if not find the kills. The respawns come back through. Joel's gets two off of Planted getting green fingers here as they take out the Grover, or rather pluck them by their stem. And that is a cleanup. We do have 50 seconds left, but G2 might not make this push. 57,000 damage. Bodies has made big plays, and this is a guy we have to see show up if G2 want a chance. Evil Eye as well. So far, so good. And, and they've been good on Serpent Beach. I mean, remember, they did win that game. Uh, you know, when they play the Maeve earlier on in this week on this exact map, but how can they finish? Can they put this full drive into momentum. Can they finally find the answer they've been looking for? Getting some wins on the board. And it looks like Chronix, with the pressure he's under, might just be the start of this push. In too much trouble, Gus Cutie and Evil Eye on May focus their down. Here for comes it. the whirlwind. This is the re-engage from G2 Esports, and that's a Hexafire to confirm. That's it, G2 Esports. They take game one. Smiles. Uh, energy standing up out of their chairs. I haven't seen Cus stand up in, what, I mean, three sets at this point? This is a telling, telling sign. I don't know what happened, but definitely when things come up for you as a team, it often op gives you the opportunity to, to, to have some rough moments, but then come back fresh, and it seems like they have. Overall, they just play like a coordinated unit, and that was one of the things that was missing from a lot of G2's play and performance in previous, not just sets, but in lands at this point. In the PPL Spring Finals at the Vegas land, yeah. they were just hitting the gas pedal all in different coordinated times. It was like, all right, I'll ult here, I'll ult here, I'll chase a kill here and there. Rather than actually being, uh, as I mentioned, coordinated, cohesive, a, an absolute unit it, of a North American team. Certainly. And, you know, it's really different when you're the Warriors and you're up by 30 and you're taking threes from half court and you're making all of them. When you don't have the pressure of being down by 20, when you don't have the pressure of being down, having to make every possession you count. You about sports again? I am. You, you don't right. get it, but maybe somebody out there might. Um, and I think at this idea, too, G2 now are playing up. They're playing confident. They're playing right. with a lead. Now that's a dangerous North American team in the building right here. Let's see what the desk has to say after game one. I have to completely echo that sentiment. I, I said game one might almost de decide this set outright okay. because of how important game one is. And not only a best of three, but to G2 Esports as well. They're looking so locked in, like almost like they just shrugged it off. Like it was it was nothing really. We're just dialed in, ready to go for the next game. And it's just the way they were rolling it too. It's one of those things that if it had gone 4-3, been like neck and neck towards the end, even the win might have been kind of a sweat. Yeah. But 4-0, you jump up out of your seat. You're feeling yourself. Finally, your team's being able to get something done. This is when you can finally move forward. And, and we said how important I Drop Bodies was going to be to this set. He was top damage, absolutely phenomenal on the Kinesa. And, and that's something I want to talk about. And this game overall felt like a, a good draft from Kanga, but a great draft from G2. Good play from Kanga, but great play from G2. I am personally wasn't super in love with, with the pit ban. Uh, frankly, I yeah. think Cus Cutie's going to do what he's going to do on any of those solo supports, whether it's Grove or whether it's Pip. I don't know if that's the right way to attack it. Uh, I think the Ruckus being much more impactful and frankly almost free for G2 because the you know with 3 DPS Kanga just don't have the the lineup to run it and like just the way he was setting it up there were several times where you would see anyone Chronix, Diggy Dog someone show their head 
immediately. Headshot gone completely off the table, not able to have any of the impact that they wanted out of the champions yeah. they got. And they just dominated it every single fight. And it kind of helped because, again, they had Kinesa getting one shot, either headshot or a big body shot, and then Maeve would come in and clean it up. That needed to be Joel if Kanga were going to win this game, just to be straight up. Kinesa had to go to Kanga there, and I wonder where they'll go with their draft because I was I was so thrown off with this draft, frankly. I thought it was going to yeah. be Chronix on the Bomb King. I thought it was going to be Diggy Dog on the Buck. I thought it would have been Joel on the Shaolin, which it was, but it, it's not standard stuff. That's the point for Kanga. It's not, I don't think, super comfortable stuff for them, especially when you look at what G2 were able to bring to the table. G2 is a hard team to throw off balance, so I think Kanga should focus on comfort more than anything going forward and this is the last game to do it. Yeah, now going into this, you kind of have to wonder. I also agree. I want them to see that pit ban just taken away. Don't do it again. Go for something else, something that maybe it was impactful there. Get rid of the Maeve. It was definitely something, depending on where you go <laughs> map-wise, that she was doing so much work. And even in moments where it was like, well, you know, that pounce only hit for 500. She's still just sitting there getting in your face, and she single-handedly either pulls attention to her or kills you because you're not watching. That's the thing. That's the thing that might... <sighs> Might be it for Kenga in this set is the champion pool, right? I don't think you can ban out Evil Eye. I think it, you, he's got the Bomb King. He's got the Drogos. He's got the Kinesa. He's got the Maeve. He's got a lot of things. Diggy Dog's got a lot of stuff, too. It, it, it's Joel's and it's Chronix that I think need to be super comfortable. I think G2 saw that set earlier. They saw Chronix get Cassie three times in a row, and they said, eh, that's an easy fix for us. Yeah, just something you don't need to worry about. And that's one of those things. They were first pick. If they really wanted it, they probably could have let that through and either forced Kanga to ban it away yeah. or grabbed it up for themselves. But recognizing, okay, well, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to have to play it in this kind of circumstance where it's like she seems necessary to draft but just doesn't quite accomplish the same thing as whatever else we're trying to run. So just get rid of her. Don't let them have it because of the way Chronix played. And that just seemed to swipe the legs out from under Kanga. There's nothing quite like the Ka the Cassie and the Shaolin for Chronix, in my opinion. I think those are his best two champions. Bright Marsh will be the next map. Kanga just got absolutely stomped out on this map, but frankly, so has everyone else that Chroma Space played on Bright Marsh here. This is going to be decided probably by the front line here. Anara look yeah. for her to go pretty highly prioritized in this draft. I'm kind of curious if we're going to see the Bomb King come through again, because this is one of the maps that he used to be relatively solid on. I mean, yeah. he's still solid on, but he was really high priority. You and think Drogos? Kind of shifted through. Drogos as well, both of them. Drogos has been the highlight, and Evil Eye, with the way he's been playing it, I wouldn't be too surprised to see G2 maybe try to scoop that one up. And I think with Maeve off the board, he has got to be much higher in priority now, both Evil Eye and Diggy Dog. Incredible blaster players for both teams. I love these bands, though. I think this is definitely the right adjustment for Kanga. Get rid of the ruckus. So two of the big things that were causing trouble there, but you end up letting slip through just a little bit more. Makoa right now is notable, and this is where G2, you can kind of make or break the decision. Is it going to be worrisome for you, or can you get rid of it? Whether you want to ban it away, or if you're just going to say, let's deal with it. We can kill him off. We're not too big of a threat. I mean, he wins a lot of games. But he loses a few in there as well whenever he gets through. His win rate's really kind of fluctuating. I think it's pretty much whether you want Makoa or you want Inara. I think even if they didn't ban Makoa there, Kanga may yeah. still have taken Cassie, to be quite honest with you. And as a matter of fact, Inara is going to be so important. In fact, I think <laughs> the way she absolutely thrashed them in their prior set makes that an easy choice for Kanga. Being able to come into this... Going up against Anara, you like shut down some of the healing that keeps her alive. Fernando's going to be great with that with the brand. <sighs> of course, Cassie's available, so there's really nowhere Ooh. else to go. But that just That's you rough. start stacking up if you're G2 right here. And, and so much of what Anara does is absorb you're healing, right? But then Fernando, Cassie, you pick the Shaolin into the Cassie as well. He's going to be scouted out for so long. Drogos has got to be big here. But again, the brand, the kinetics from Cassie and Fernando, the inbuilt anti heal against an Inara, G2, ah, they are looking pretty much invaluable at the moment. I wonder if Kanga in that moment was a we need to play the Drogos or we cannot let them have Drogos as well as everything else we've given up. Kind of forces G2 into an interesting position. Do they want to go for something? I mean, Androxus has always been big for them, so being able to try and pull that out, this is a map where we have seen success with it, although that's been on more, I want to say, Renegades kind of territory oh, where they're more comfortable with it. Mm. It's just someone to get in there and kill them. Well, what do you think with the Genos? Never mind. I was going to say, with the Genos locked in here, we got a lot of flexibility to go <laughs> for some more DPS for G2. Cassie 
is a very flexible pick that, frankly, Bodies or Doe or Evil Eye could be playing. So they are so wide open in the early stage of this draft. Damba is going to go to Kanga. That's a great combination with the Nara. But like we talked about, plenty of inbuilt anti-heal already on the board for G2 Esports. And with a lot of room to be able to go into cauterize for anyone who might need it. I mean, overall, there's not going to be a huge necessity for it, I think, early on, but still might want to grab it just to be safe. Zen comes through, might have a little bit of strength to him, but when it comes down to it, I mean, Genos and Droxus Cassie, those three together are just going to be hitting so hard. Drogos has a natural hunter in this. Sha Lin's going to have a bad matchup versus the Cassie. There's a lot that Kinga is really, I want to say, banking on this Inara. And it is their first pick. It is you know, their win condition for all intents and purposes. The things you draft early are the things you're looking to lean on most heavily in these drafts. G2 now headed into their bank time as they talk about their last pick. And, uh, you know, don't hate it. Tinker and Barrick with the Genos yeah. Luminary. I think it's a great combination. And and Tinkerin has never been my problem with Barrick. No it's way. back when Subjects Architect Tonics. No, but it will be the swap onto we'll the Bomb King. So much firepower for this G2 lineup. Now, it's one of those moments where I feel like Tinker and Barrack is still one of those, like, hey, we need a hit scan and we need someone to maybe get a little bit more pressure onto the Drogos. But if the lineup they have is like, we have Androx, like, don't worry about it. We have Cassie, don't worry about it. Get something to deal with everything else. We need to take down Inara. We need to take down Sha Lin. We need to get rid of Zen. Well, okay. this is it for Kanga Esports. The boys either bounce back now or they go home. G2 have a great lineup, and I think it's going to come down to the play. We've seen what I drop bodies can do on this Andro, though. So it's time to get in the game and see if he can do it again. Yeah, I think at this point, you know, the bear comes in because they don't have uh, a pick for Evil Eye settled on yet. And at this point, you're really looking at then. If you take the Barrack, you're drafting Dosips onto maybe something like that, forcing Evil Eye onto a, onto a Cassie and then trying to switch it up. But now Doe can play Cassie. Um, Evil Eye can play Bomb King. You get bodies onto an incredibly good Androxus, and you have a Genos amping them all up. I think this is a, a, a smart pick to go just, hey, let's just commit to offense for G2. It's a very powerful composition from G2, and after their performance on Southern Beach with a damage-heavy comp as well, I mean... Calling ruckus damage at this point based on that output from those ups previously. I'm expecting them to follow suit on this map of Bright Marsh as well, but looking at the talents coming through here, the uh, Mother's Grace for us Rhino is definitely going to help stop that. Notably here with possibly double inbuilt anti heal for the side of G2. They're able to itemize into more Kronos, more Master Riding, notably for Wardens Fernando here, but I drop bodies with that elusive loadout. We're going to go in. Elusive five. He might go up here. Okay, he's going to go stay on the mount, I was saying. But this deck, you can actually really ride up above. This is a little safer, I think, though. Right, has been spotted out. Here we go. Tries to fire up a, a couple of Ooh. shots, but forced out immediately. Yeah, not a good sequence there, Vox. 24%, though, for Kenga Esports. They put that Inara in, and they know she's not going to die immediately, so they wait. But Diggy Dog's got to be careful. He's got pressure from both sides, and now this could be it. Diggy Dog first blooded. Thanks to Drop Bodies, and War Doom follows suit shortly thereafter. Reversal, not enough to take down Os Rhino. He'll trade onto the flanker, but overall, this is G2 Esports with a full wipe onto Kanga. So G2 do get the better side of that trade, and they do get the objective capture percentage ticking up for them here now, but I am a little bit confused about Eyedrop body's choice to walk straight into an Inara with uh, her water field active. It's yeah, pretty he much didn't a, realize that. A guaranteed death, yeah. I'm not sure if that was just to draw focus potentially. I think he might have just been blocking for his team, maybe trying to keep the support alive in the backside. You know, obviously Cuscuti was in there fighting, and that damage is important to have from a Genos. He can commit quite a lot, but Joel's there commits quite a lot there on the bodies as well, so he's going to go down, but nice burst there from the captain. Dosip slays the dragon in the skies, and now Kangar Esports are without their blaster. It's actually a Void Grip as well, which is holding the Drogos in place. That's a really good play from the support coming out of G2 Esports. Cuss Cutie, of course, on the objective. Us Rhino is trying to contest the Bomb King. He's back for the nice sound shot. thing. So you can hear that jingling. Joel's oh my. looking for the damage. Double <gasps> kill already. And he gets out. Resets. Finds what? the ability to go back in. Oh what? my goodness. Diggy Dog with the fuck. Oh my goodness. I do not believe it. Kang Look at Joel's face. Come back on through. He's smiling. He's like, that did not just happen. Do not tell me I just made that play. But he did. And that's what Kanga Esports needs. They need this baby face killer to grow up and be a grown man here and make a statement for his squad. Older brother's not playing anymore. They need some heart from this team. And they're finally getting it. Boom. 
when the fire spent right there. And as well, just the fact that Joel's was able to uh, live through all of that. If we have the opportunity, when we go back to Joel's, can we take a look at that loadout? I think that must have been a bullseye cooldown reset. Right, had to which be. Which enabled them to get, or maybe a shimmer withdrawal reset, something like that. But I drop bodies <laughs> held in place. overkill. That is just insult to injury at that point. That is hold him up, smack him down, give him the two best killing ultimates in game. And I don't know how G2 Esports are going to come back from that within the next few seconds or so. They're going to have to regroup behind some cover and at least try and find a way to stabilize. Maybe invested a little bit too many of uh, their precious ultimates into one person, but yeah, I mean, you get them off the board. I disagree. Honestly, I draw bodies has been such a caveat, such a win condition for the side of G2. <laughs> so you spite them and dragon punch them? That's your plan? You just tell I draw bodies off the so face of the when earth. when an shows up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just the, not the, walking the Andro through The Andro is uh, coming out strong. He's, you know, he's bold right now, but you want to make him metallicized because they're so tilted. <laughs> yeah. Maybe put him underlined or underscored at this point as they're going under the ground. G2 Esports, though, do manage to defend successfully. And looking at this one minute left in the clock, Evan, I'm looking towards Kanga Esports to not really go for push unless they find a couple of good opening kills from just neutral fights at this point. I'm looking at them to charge ultimates because they're all relatively low on the scoreboard. Actually, they're going to use Dread 7 to try and engage here. I think this is good. Build some space for Diggy Dog, but man, Bodies has really been a, bite, a beast, huh? He's been more of a dragon than actually the dragon here in Chronix. He knows it himself. He's got a flaming sword, but in Drax, he'll just stick with the revolver, load up the clip yet again. Eight bullets is enough to find two players on the side of Kanga. Damage dealt charts so far, not really having Androxus in much contention. 12,000 there, so I drop body's not making much of an impact, just effective damage more than it's anything the else. It's the buck style, right? Kills, right? Yeah, where he's getting the cleanup, he's not necessarily making the big impact, but again, he's really shutting down Diggy Dog quite often. It's pretty hard for him to lock this guy down. Trying to, misses a lot of shots there. Kronix now goes in, and I drop bodies should be dead to rights here as Joel's finds the last kill with their crystal bow here. Eight seconds left on this push. Kang Esports again don't have ultimate charges ready for this next neutral cap, and G2 Esports are sitting on all five. And I can't tell you how good it feels to see Dosips on a carry, man. Dosips with a triple kill there, almost with the Quadra. Wardoom cleans it up. But, you know, finally having the captain able to do something, and here's that tremendous play. I don't know how he does this. Here we go, and you can see 15 seconds on the cooldown. That's a shimmer set reset, actually. When we come back in, let's again, let's see if we can take a look at Joel's loadout before we get back in, because there's the bullseye cooldown reset from the elimination, but also I think he was brought below he that 50% uh, health threshold. Shimmer card, like survival for Drogos, where if you're brought under a certain health threshold, you can, uh, there yeah. we go. Sh oh, shimmer he's running four. level four. Uh, a 60% health threshold, actually. It res uh, resets the cooldown of withdrawal. Five, it can only happen four, once every 30 seconds, three, but it's two, such a clutch one. card for getting you out of dangerous situations at higher ranks, because you get that uh, extra reset early. Not just that, the withdrawal that's reset by Shimmer allows you to apply more bonus damage with the Desert Shadow talent here. Oh, this is a nice little angle right here, knowing Dread that they the want to hide up on the stairs. Dread the Needle indeed. And the problem is Bodies is in a really bad spot here, and Diggy Dog finds a mid-air with a rocket, and this time the Dragon gets the better end of the flanker. An immortal there from War Doom, trying to keep his teammates alive. Diggy Dog, he will fall thanks to War Doom's pressure. Great stuff from the front line, helping his team to Get some momentum back in this fight. Savage. I'm gonna be honest with you there. I'm not sure why Diggy Dog actually went to commit. The Immortal was popped just before the uh, Dragon Punch oh. connected. Maybe just thought I'll bring somebody down to 1500 health, an easy cleanup for the Zin. But G2 Esports come back in strong. Another great Void Grip as well, just helping pin down members for this Cassie to focus. G2 Esports they're fighting as a coordinated unit again. Wait, can we see some KDAs? Can we see some KDAs? Because that's 15 streak. Is Dosip really? Oh my God, Dosip's got one death it almost feels like in this entire set. This oh my is goodness. crazy. This man is going off right now. I don't know what it takes to get Dosips mad, but I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it because this man is soft-spoken. He is sweet. He loves his audiobooks just like me. Right now, Joel's shutting him down, and that really is going to put his second death on the board. And Kanga Esports again looking prime and ready to take this objective over the North Americans. You saw it rise up to about 80% for Kanga. G2 Esports comes back in with a good retake, but Kanga had that initial advantage, that initial capture on the objective, which was so significant that it doesn't take much for them to be able to come back in. And Diggy Dog is looking to extend this payload push right now, make it as easy as possible, trying to get the lock up onto Evil Eye Fire Spit Explosion. Not connecting. No. Dozops is going to force him out of here as well. He's been good, though. I really liked his Drogos. I mean, oh, yeah. He's fighting against, uh, you know, every counter <laughs> that you could think. I mean, even Fernando's a rough counter for him because just one fireball 
Brandon as well is going to make it very tough for Nudie to get him back to a healthy place to continue being involved in the fight. He knows Bodies is coming. He sets a salvo up. The reversal should still be available for him, but he's going to find him as he drops down. Doesn't even go defensive. Full offense for G2. That seems to be G2's game plan this game. They want to go in. They want to frag. They want to overpower Kanga Esports before Kanga Esports can out sustain them with this Inara Maldamba combo. Kanga Esports, so this time around, they're getting their ultimates charged online. Only the seismic crash is nowhere near to be being close right now. G2 just have scale. You know, there's the spite, and it actually tries to find <laughs> very uh, ambitious, I would say. Tries to find Androxus in the air, so Chronic's going for some of the highlight plays. Uh, uh, but look at this. Again, I drop bodies playing extremely well, and this is Nuti just knowing that he has to capitalize on a very aggressive, overextended front line, but Evil Eye is right there again to relieve some pressure just by being offensive. Wow, is that, was that a resilience pickup that we saw come out of I drop bodies there as well? Seemed to get out of the dread step and incredibly it quickly, did. which it, it might be. There might be some it was. CC Reason. reduction. Look, too. There we go. I drop bodies recognizing the fact that if they dive the back line, they're going to be focused down by so many people, especially if you're playing a flank of us as a Charlotte on Bright Marsh. Yeah. That's just valuable to have as well. There's so many places where you can get impaled into walls and stunned, and that planted impale combo is definitely not something that you want to really mess with here. Good choice by us, Rhino, just to kind of lock off that angle for the time being. Sees that there's a big ambush ready and waiting. G2 Esports, uh -oh. they're holding pretty strong uh -oh. here as Dozops is just able to pick up oh kill my. after kill. And I mean, that was a great shot by Diggy because it did not look like he was going to win that, but Dozops cleans him up. Dozops knows Chronix around the corner. He'll lie on him, pressuring away. He'll roll into the middle. Chronix is just going to call it off. For now, 20 seconds left. G2 have one more chance to defend, and Kang Esports have one more chance remaining. to push. Oh, look at the sticky bomb trap right here as well. This he is really spotted it. out by Chronix, and no. that Yomi strike will take care of that pretty easily. Seven. But seven seconds Six. left again. Kanga Five. missing some ultimate charge here, whilst G2 Three. have more. Might Two. try and force something out of G2, one. but nobody close enough really to get onto the objective. Time. Overtime has been started. Us Rhino burned down to about half. It's yeah. a bad situation. Kanga Esports should give this up at this point, but they're just committing. And this is what Fernando can do, right? I mean, he's there. He's got his defensive mechanics. He's got a lot, but right now, he's basically contributed Double to the Joel's. amount of damage oh my goodness. that can really change a game. And look at that again, Wardoom with another fireball. Joel's doesn't have any healing. Wardoom might just clean this up himself. He has been terrorizing this back line, and now it looks like Joel's will fall thanks to bodies. This pressure from the front line, I don't care what has been going on with G2, but Wardoom is having a fantastic performance today. Could have been a bit of a close one. If Wardoom hadn't hit that last fireball, it would have been a dangerous yeah, that situation. Would have been interesting. Because you had, of course, Joel's find a double kill on Shaolin. Be grouped up with Os Rhino. If that had been out of combat regen, taking a second earlier, then maybe yeah. you could have seen this Inara buy enough time for the respawns to come back in from Kanga. Right. But Wardoom did put a lot of pressure onto Os Rhino earlier on in that fight. Was spending a lot of time brawling frontline to frontline. So whilst the pressure is coming through, there is something going on with target uh, target prioritization here, which might be somewhat questionable. Cuss is having too good of a game, as well as Wardoom. I mean, Cuss is, he looks at his tab, he's saying 35 and 2. I feel like Cuss is playing like Tetris on another window at this point. He's just going, all right, I'm here, guys. Heal, heal, heal. Cool, we're done for a few seconds. Cuss is just not being pressured out entirely. That's expected from Kanga, who don't really have the strongest of flank pressure with just Chronix on the Zin. It's not like it's a double a double flank of Geo or something like that. And Cuss plays an incredibly safe Genos. But now, Scout available. Don't deny me this. Embrace, says G2 Esports. They're sending Evil Eye in. Hello, King Bomb. And you may be my subjects for sure. Immortal saves the lives of Evil Eye as the CC immunity, the damage immunity, means he won't die, even though the seismic crash has been used by the Stagala. Joel's looking to fall down as well, but he goes hidden, and that means that he will escape with his life. Three members still alive for Kanga, and there's still a chance. 51% though for G2. He flies in the high ground though. This is really excellent oh. positioning for a bomb king. And Joel's being pressured out so heavily at this point. Wardoom oh, finds him with that. the fireball that's and the that's Wardoom it. Pressure that you expect. Dragon punch, there another one. Oh my God, Wardoom finds Diggy Dog before the dragon punch can go off a triple kill from Wardoom. A quadra kill from the Doom. And G2 Esports are about to move ahead three to two with a chance to move on in this set. G2 Esports right now, they're looking like a hot team and not just because of those Fernando plays, but because of all the pressure coming out of every single member of this roster. Evil Eyes Bomb King has been on point. Well, actually, really, no. It's been Cus who's been on point, but Evil Eyes Bomb King has been picking up multiple multi-kills at this point, and is landing a lot of damage onto this mid-air Drogas as well, the value of which really can't be understated because Diggy Dog is 
probably the biggest threat alongside Joel's on this team. And I'm surprised. I mean, 58,000 damage is actually not where I expected Wardroom to be. I expected him to be much higher, but you could just see the amount of kills he's getting, the amount of big plays he's making is just because of his timing. It's because of his game sense. It has nothing to do with just spamming fireballs. It's he's hitting the right fireballs on the right people at the right time. But it's, it's far from over. G2 have had two defenses and defended all of them. And Kenga Esports look good at stalling this defense about halfway now. And so there's still a lot of work to be done for both of these teams. One minute and 36 seconds left in the clock. G2 Esports, if they push through here, they can convert. Evan, I'm looking at their ultimates as to who yeah. is going to be able to really enable this fight. And so far, it's just Evil Eye with the King Bomb. I Drop Bodies is trying to make space, but there's no big hammer to kind of break through the defense so far. And especially with I Drop Bodies Wait. being eliminated, that'll put in, you know, another 20 seconds, maybe okay. even 30 on the respawn timers right now before they can fight again. Scout is available through time and space as well. But the picks from Kanga Esports are on point. I mean, Joel's is having a lights out day. You can see the talent uh, of this player. You can see the talent of Diggy Dog as well. Um, I think the the limelight has been stolen a bit by bodies and obviously by War Doom and a little bit by Evil Eye here. But let's not forget about Cuss. Cuss is 43 and 2 right now as far as eliminations versus deaths. That's like a 23 KDA or something. And at this point, you have to shut down this damage dealer much more often, this healer much more often. Otherwise, this is not going to work out in your favor. Well, that's an I drop bodies ult if I've ever seen one. Show me some NA ult in chat, folks, because a pre, uh, just a, a telegraphed Enemy accursed arm in the middle of nowhere is not what you want to do when you've got a Drogos and a Shaolin facing you. And that's something which I drop bodies has had issues with before, but uh -oh. it did at least draw fire for GT Esports to uh, capitalize. This is an upsetty spaghetti team right now. King <laughs> Esports have got to wait on a respawn. Diggy Dog might be caught out here, but is able to retreat safely. So something in the tank remaining. right now with 15 seconds. This one should go to overtime. <sighs> Fireball doesn't connect. That was crucial. That was crucial. That would have been a big one. And here it is. The Dragon Punch coming through. He's got the Immortal. He's going to go for it. Uh, and that was smart by Diggy Dog. He just baits it out. Diggy Dog will be alive in this fight. I expect a Salvo or a Combustible very soon. But the backside seems to be keeping it busy. And Dosips finds the kill. The Captain with two big ones. And there's a through time in space. Cuss Cutie misses. So things are still on the prowl. Nudie gets stunned out, though. And now as I drop bodies, he can punch it in. G2 have punched their ticket into the next round. Kenga Esports are going home. G2 moves on. From 2-0 to 2-0, G2 Esports have found their mojo they back again. They G2-0'd. They did. And without the pip as well, so they've got their good mojo, not their evil mojo back as well. And it's fortunately, the story ends for Kanga there, and Nick's jersey on the desk, unless he decides to keep that going. He might want to retire it here. And I think it was just a, a, a tournament where their identity didn't develop yet. They didn't have enough time, really. I mean, best of threes are quick, and the fact that they just played well but couldn't find really crucial wins, crucial tide-turning moments, uh, meant that I think they... They are pretty unhappy with this performance. Here. And they also had to, you know, it's really difficult, right? Kanga coming across from overseas. They've got to be able to adapt on the fly. But also speaking of identities, G2 Esports was a team which has had to sort of re-foster their own one. They've had to re they have. reforge it in battle, as it were, because yeah. they've taken a loss at land. They've taken a loss at land twice in a row. They're now in the lower bracket, the loser's bracket, to all intents and purposes. And they're having to craft a stronger team out of the pieces they have left of themselves and seem to have done so at least successfully versus Kanga, but can they keep it up? Listen, I like a team that goes down to the dumps as low as you can drop and then starts to get some momentum again. There's no pressure for G2. They're only they're only up and up from here. Even if they lose, I think it can be expected because they haven't had a great start. I'm interested to see what the desk has to say about this. What a great set between G2 and Kanga. Definitely agree there, and uh, though we do go home losers this time around, the orange and black all around on the desk today, it, it was definitely a story about the veterans, but not so much for Kanga, more so for G2 Esports with Doe and Cuss and Wardoom having pretty much the story there. I mean, it was just so great to see Wardoom and Cuss, like the streaks they were able to get in the plays. I mean, Wardoom getting a quadra kill during yeah. all of that as well. I mean, just making themselves look good and exactly what they needed. I mean, as a rallying cry, when you are just not as comfortable, I mean, you haven't been having the weak that you really wanted coming into this land. So finally being able to start rolling forward, get some of that momentum built up for your team, you can feel a lot happier. A lot of 10 plus KDAs here in this game for sure. Dosups 13 and one at one point. We see the quadra kill come through for Wardoom. The man is, is simply everywhere. <laughs> the spectator can barely keep up with his 1600 DPI mouse flicking left, right, center fireballs for all. Come one, come all, and be melted by the veteranship of G2. Incredible stuff from them, and we knew how important that first game was going to be in a, in a quick set for G2.
And that's pretty much exactly what they needed. Kanga, though, I will say, gave him a lot more trouble than I think G2 expected in that. Joel specifically was playing phenomenally yeah. on that Shaolin, and there were so many moments where it's just, if only you could do a little bit more, if only your team could follow up a little bit better. I agree, and I, I, I will say that I wasn't in love with the ultimate usage for Kanga in that last round, especially on the point. It, w it was like, I think after Diggy and Nudie had already died, or excuse me, Diggy and Rhino had already died, it was like I see a Heat Haze pop and a Dread yeah. Serpent come out, and I'm like... I mean, do you two really turn that? Do you turn that fight around by yourselves? I mean, it happened once before, but you can't bank on those types of yeah. miracle plays happening time and time again. And it's just one of those things that you really need to read the moment. And I feel like once you get into a mindset like that where it's like, well, it worked before, let's do it again, and it doesn't work the second time, now you've set everything completely staggered apart from the rest of your team. You don't have everything lined up the same way, so you have to wait even longer before you actually have a rallying cry. With, with J, the way G2 are playing, you can't give them that time. That was just free push, free kills for them to be able to roll forward. Well, it's still a long climb back for G2, but they've got a great start here in the loser's bracket. Let's throw it over to the boys with a quick interview. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome. Congratulations on your victory in the most recent set. G2 owed to G2 O was a phrase that we used on cast, and very appropriate. You guys seem back on form after that set, and i got to ask you, what changed since yesterday? Don't take it. Mentality, man. Uh, there's something about the loser's bracket that really gets you going. Uh, we had a rough, we had a rough game, a rough set, and we had to really reset. We all got together. We talked. You know, we you just you just got to reset. Just like in game, when you die, you got to reset. Out of game, you got to reset. You know. I get it, man. I. Uh... I feel that for sure. It felt like you guys kind of hit your, your lowest of lows so far. You already hit it. And now it feels like it's kind of only up and up from here because not really a lot of pressure. If you're in the loser's bracket, you're making that historic run. And it's like, if you don't, well, nobody expects you to do it anyways. Um, but there's still a really big chance if you guys keep playing this way. It was flawless. I think you were 48-2 and two at the end of that. Um, how do you feel just now with your chances moving forward? Uh, I'm, I'm personally feeling good. I'm pretty sure the team's feeling good. Um, we've we've lost enough against Fnatic to to learn enough, and uh, I feel like we are able to dominate Envy. So whichever opponent we get next, we're 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 pretty confident that it'll be a set mm -hmm. at the very least. We just saw again a great performance out of you on that Bright Mush game specifically with Wardium seeing like he's back to his old form, picking up a quadra kill on Fernando. Yeah. Big question for me though, who has always been with this team and with your team. Does eyedrop bodies perform well? Now, there's one moment I want to ask you about. We saw right at the end, Androxus eyedrop bodies go up into the sky, ult, and get immediately picked. And then you guys won the point. Was that a, we're going to try and get a kill with this, or was that make them look up as an ult? Was that a strategy which you use? It well, wasn't so much a strategy that we used. <laughs> bodies go up in the air and just bait. <laughs> I don't see that happening. But, but the good thing with Bright Marsh is uh, we're a very flexible team, you know, but we all got like our favorite champion. Fully Bomb King, Cassie, Andro, like we were very comfortable at game for sure. I guess my big question is your your, your draft seemed very relaxed and it, it felt comfortable. You know, there was a moment you could have gone double tank there, but you guys opted for the Bomb King instead. Mm -hmm. um, is this just part of the new G2 in this tournament saying, guys, we're just going to play what we feel like we need to play right now? <laughs> I don't know. I at the very end, we were we were okay with picking a second tank or okay with picking a damage. Mm -hmm. And I said, Warden, are you feeling Varric? And he said, I'm feeling Ash, dude. And I was like, All right, let's pick Bomb King. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> he might be playing on that new patch. Well, that's hilarious, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, good luck. You still are fighting in this tournament, so we're looking forward to the more games you have. Thank you. Okay. 